And here we are to do a little exploration of the saboteurs. This is vocabulary and research um, from the from positive intelligence. I recently completed a positive intelligence study program, and I'm actually finding it very helpful. So I want to share some of this with you too. And this concept is that there are 10 saboteurs, often referred to as paradigms in other arenas. Though what I like about this is that it's possible to determine which of these saboteurs holds the most power over your thoughts. Labels can be useful or damaging, obviously, depending on how they're used. As we're each individuals, we each have different configurations and strengths of the naysayer voices, those voices of self-criticism and self-doubt and, and the judgment, and, 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 right? Everyone has the judge, and the other accomplices work in conjunction with the judge at various levels. I have found it wonderfully helpful to know that for me, the hyper-rational and the hyper-achiever are tied at first place <laughs> on a scale of one to 10. These are not lazily drifting along at a low level. It's helpful to be able to call those voices something, to identify them and to be able to take steps to minimize them. It's all another aspect of raising one's self-awareness. I don't necessarily identify with all of the descriptors 100%, though some of them are actually right on target and useful to know. It's hyper-rational. I do have an intense and an active mind. Do I come across as intellectually arrogant? You can let me know. I do think it's accurate that I'm private and I don't let you know many people into my deeper feelings and mostly show feelings through passion and ideas and, and prefer to watch the craziness around me and analyze from a distance. And that what I value most is knowledge, understanding and insight. It justifies itself by saying that the rational mind is the most important thing that it should be protected so it can get its work done. That self-worth is attached to mastering knowledge, mastering competence. However, what good is all that knowledge if it's not being shared? As hyperachiever, here it is again, right? Dependent, constant performance and achievement for self-respect and self-validation. Workaholic tendencies and loss of touch with deeper emotional needs and competitive and image conscious. Well, yes, I am. I work in entertainment too. And, so, and that I'm good at covering up insecurities and, and showing a positive image. I can be self-promoting. Well, which I actually think is a good thing because now that I'm pretty much my own agent, I want to get a, good, a bit better at that, no? However, thinking that I have to be this great achiever and have to be efficient and effective every minute doesn't serve the big picture, does it? What's interesting is that both of these things are both considered original survival functions. The self-validation and self-acceptance and self-love are all conditional on continued performance and escape into that need and orderly from emotional turmoil or chaotic surroundings is essential. And it, that really comes from conditional or altogether, you know, lack of parental validation. It's interesting. That, you know, with this and the other saboteurs as well, having this more specific information is valuable because I know what I'm on the lookout for. And I'm also developing stronger tools and using to, to be able to minimize these destructive voices, creating new neural pathways at a faster rate because I'm recognizing the saboteurs more quickly and squashing them before they derail me or, you know, so easily or so often, right? And so what I'm finding is it's a very humane way of reprogramming. The saboteurs want you to think that you have shortcomings. Yes, we each have different strengths and talents, though it's really so much about our levels of awareness. 